Hi, I'm Rudy Streif. I'm the director of Embedded Solutions for the Linux Foundation. And today I'll give you a little sneak peek into our LF405 training class on building embedded Linux systems with the Octo project. The Octo project is a very cool tool set actually that allows you to build Linux distributions from scratch for your hardware. And what we are going to do today is maybe the most exciting part of this class is actually, well, where the rubber hits the road, or maybe more like where the Linux kernel image hits the silicon, we're going to build a board support package with the Octo project for our little uh, demo hardware, which is the um, BeagleBone from Texas Instruments. All right, let's get started. A little intro into our target development board. It's the BeagleBone from Texas Instruments. It has a Texas Instruments AM3359 CPU, 256 megabytes of RAM, a 1000 megabit base T Ethernet port, USB host port, USB serial, USB JTAG, and a connector for a um, flash memory chip and a couple of expansion connectors where you can do some breadboarding and additional uh, experiment with it. First of all, we need to connect our board. We need to set our board up so that we can talk from our host computer uh, with our board. For this, we use the Minicom um, program. So if you have Minicom already installed on your system, then fine. If not, you can easily install it by uh, typing on an Ubuntu distribution, sudo apt-get install uh, Minicom. And then it will install Minicom on your system. After that, you want to plug in your BeagleBone board into your system. We have the USB cable that is provided. And this little board has a serial port to um, USB uh, converter on it. So we'll have to find out which serial port actually to use. To do that, you type um, D message on your console. And it will eventually um, tell you that um, there are a couple of um, serial ports now, uh, new serial port devices um, initialized. And one of them is the serial port for this board. In our case, it's um, slash dev slash TTY USB 1. Accessing serial devices under Linux is normally restricted to um, certain user groups. So access to slash dev slash TTY USB 1 would be restricted normally to the user group or to a special user group that's called um, dial out. So you have two options, actually, what you can do to, um, to get access to the serial port. So either you change the permissions on that serial port um, simply by typing um, sudo change mod 0666 slash dev slash TTY USB 1. Or you can simply add yourself to that special user group by typing sudo user mod minus a minus capital G dial out. And um, for this class, actually, we're using the student user. But if you have on your system a different user, you would use your username. So we call it student in this case. Now we're pretty much ready to go to actually uh, connect to our um, BeagleBone board for the first time. So first we need to launch a Minicom in setup mode so that we can actually um, uh, set the right communication parameters. We do this with sudo minicom minus s. It goes into um, setup mode. You will have to enter your super user password or root password. You get a little menu there and you f um, scroll down there to serial port setup. Um, set your serial device. And also set your communications parameters to 150,200 bits per second, eight data bits, no parity, and one stop it. Press Enter. Press Enter again and save this as your default um, configuration. 
and exit for Minicom. Now we're going to start Minicom again, this time in user mode or in, so that we can actually communicate with the BeagleBone board. For this, you type Minicom minus O minus W. We are now connected to our BeagleBone board through our Minicom terminal. We won't see much yet because we do not have a uh, SD chip inserted into the BeagleBone with the, an operating system. So all the BeagleBone does right now is sent to back to our uh, Minicom terminal is an endless um, string of capital C letters. But we're right, ready to go and go to the next step. As a next step, we need to get our SD chip ready and we need to partition and format it for use with the BeagleBone and with Linux. For that, we have our chip inserted into a USB card reader and we use the dmessage program to find out which device the Linux operating system on our host has assigned to this chip. We type dmessage and we see that this uh, chip has been assigned to this device slash dev slash dev slash sdc. And to partition and format this uh, chip, I've prepared a little script and we run this script as a super user by typing sudo bbone sh and we provide the name of the device, slash dev, slash sdc. And then the script asks us if we're sure that we want to format this device. And we enter with yes. And now it's partitioning the SD chip and also formatting the SD chip. That takes a couple of seconds. All right, um, our little script is now done partitioning and formatting our uh, micro SD chip. Now we want to try out if it has actually worked. Uh, for that, we need to create mount points so that we can mount these partitions to our host system. And for that, we type sudo mkdir. These mount points are simple um, directory nodes on our um, host's file system. And we mount, tho mount those three partitions on the media as media big root, big boot, media, big root one, and media, big root two. Then we need to edit our um, file system table. That's the file in slash atc um, slash sf tab. And into that file we insert um, three entries for the three partitions. So first you load this file into your favorite editor. Mine in this case would be just a simple text editor VI. And to the end of this file simply add um, three lines. And these lines are slash dev slash sdc1 slash media slash big root auto user no auto and zero, 0, for the file system checks, and we repeat that for the root partitions, big root 1 and big root 2. And in the final step, we actually see if our file systems mount. So we simply type mount media big boot, and now our host system picks the mount point and the mount parameters up from our file system table and mounts it to the host system. So everything seems to be working. So we're ready for the next step. So now let's look first into the theory of Yocto project board support packages. So we go a little bit through, uh, explain the concepts of Yocto BSPs. We explore Yocto BSP, um, so several methods for building a BSP, and the Yocto BSP script that makes it actually easy uh, for you to create a BSP and then we actually are building a BSP for the BeagleBone board. In general, a BSP is a collection of information that defines how software platform actually supports a hardware platform, a particular hardware platform, such as a device or a family of devices that have similar characteristics. And in the BSP, we'll typically find documentation, hardware features, configuration data, software patches for source code, 
and binary files. The Octo Project DSPs do not include a build system or any tools, and that makes them different maybe from other um, board support packages because all the tooling is really provided by the Octo Project itself. The Octo Project DSP is simply a layer on top of what the Octo Project already provides. And that is actually a very powerful concept because it makes it easy for you to swap out a BSP for another BSP and simply build the exact same Linux operating system stack for a different piece of hardware. If you want to find out everything in detail about the Octo Project BSPs, look at the Octo Project Board Support Package Developers Guide, and you can find that at www.octoproject.org slash docs slash current slash BSP dash guide, and there you find all the details about it. The Octo Project BSP layers follow a certain naming convention. As any Yocto layer, they actually start with the prefix meta, and then a dash, and then the BSP name. Do you have to follow that convention? No, not necessarily, but it is just a good convention and best practices. And then you have to include your BSP layer into your Yocto project and build environment like you do with any other Yocto project layer. And you do that by editing the BB layers variable in your layers.conf file. Multiple BSP layers actually may be nested inside of a container layer. And this is very common practice with silicon vendors who provide BSPs for entire families of chipsets and bundle them together in one um, big Yocto BSP container layer. This graphic shows the basic layout of a Yocto BSP. Yocto BSP follows a certain layout uh, structure. Actually, BSPs may differ from this structure by adding or removing some of the directories. But in general, there are certain directories that always have to be there for Yocto BSP to be considered Yocto project compliant. Like any Yocto metadata layer, BSP layers include a conf subdirectory in which you will find the layer configuration as well as the machine configuration. The machine configuration is actually settings that define how the Yocto project actually builds the source code for your particular hardware. And you will also find recipes to build certain packages for your hardware. These can be new recipes for the BSP, or those can be extensions to recipes that already exist in the Yocto project. The best way of learning about Yocto project BSPs and how they're built is looking at existing BSPs, and you find those in the Octo Project's Git repository. And you can simply check, the, check those out from there using the Git command. So you type git clone, git colon slash slash git dot project dot org. And in this case, we use the meta intel container BSP, which contains a lot of BSPs for different Intel chipsets. So meta-intel. And then Git will clone that repository and check it out. Then you can browse through the different directories and learn about how this is structured. There are several ways, methods of building the Octo BSPs and these BSP layers. You can do this manually from scratch by creating the directory structure on your host system by hand. You can, of course, copy an existing BSP layer and modify it to your hardware. Or the third method is using the Octo Project BSP scripts. Copying makes a lot of sense if you have hardware that is very similar to hardware for which the Octo Project already provides a BSP. And using the BSP scripts is actually very comfortable because you can use those to configure the Octo Project Linux kernel for your BSP and do many more things um, rather comfortably in an interactive environment. In our class, we will be showing you how to use the Octo BSP scripts to create a BSP, to adapt it to the BeagleBone board, to create a bootloader, to create the Linux kernel, and to create a root file system image and put all of those onto your SD card and then boot the BeagleBone board. 
And when you finally see your board boot the first time into the Linux kernel and into the root file system, that is a great feeling. And to get this feeling, we invite you to take our class. If you're interested in more details about this training class and other training classes the Linux Foundation has to offer, go to our website. We're looking forward to seeing you in one of our classes very soon. Thank you very much.